Hi, my name is Jo. Uh, my name is Alistair and uh, we've owned our gymnasium, this fitness facility now, uh, for the past 12 years. Originally opened in 2006. We're located in South Wales in a small town called Pontypool, which is within the borough of Torvine. And we're about uh, 10 minutes north of Newport, about half an hour away from Cardiff. We've um, progressed over the years and we've grown and sort of reinvested the money into the facility. And we were at a stage where uh, we kind of um, hit a ceiling with our business. Yet despite that, it really wasn't giving us the return um, the financial return that we'd expect from all the work we put into it. We had all this work and effort being put in, into the facility, but it wasn't kind of repaying us in terms of money, in terms of time, in terms of time with our kids, time with our family. So literally every hour under the sun was dedicated to running the facility, keeping it open, keeping it running, serving the members. But we, there's something missing in that process, which meant we weren't able to take back the financial reward from all the effort we put in. And it's about pressure and it's about life because you, you, you try to be all things. So you try to be the manager, the coach, the trainer, the cleaner, the programme designer, the marketing person, the advertising person, the retention person, the person who keeps people, brings people in and you can't do it all. You can only sustain that so long. So Al would come home, um, he'd worked mad hours, you'd come home, we'd program design, you'd then try and work the marketing and then you might have been hit with a few cancellations. And you just, you think, well, let's try this, or let's try that, or let's, what are we doing wrong? And you're always trying to explore how you can make it better. And sometimes you just can't be everything to everyone. So there was kind of two real pivotal moments for us. Um, the, the most pronounced one was when um, <clears throat> it was Christmas time yeah. and um, we were struggling to be able to pay for all the presents for our kids that we wanted to buy them. We um, have five children. <laughs> we have five so, sons. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> we were determined to kind of, you know, do what we could and we ended up having to, to sort of run promotional gradings and things like that um, with our martial arts school just to try and make sure we had enough income to help cover, you know, what we wanted to do for our children at Christmas time. Um, and so what had happened was we had an experience like this the previous Christmas. We then kind of made a, a sort of pact to say that we, you know, we'd do what we could to make sure we didn't have to go through that again. again. Following Christmas came and we weren't in any type of position that was better than the previous year. And um, it just got to the stage where we, we'd had enough. We'd been in contact with Martin, who had helped us with some lead generation, which had, had made a difference, um, but there's still so many parts of the puzzle that were missing from a, a member service standpoint, from a retention standpoint. Um, and so just before um, Christmas, we actually had a marketing cycle which produced um, sort of 20 new members. That was all good. Then as we approached Christmas, we lost 25. So we were in a position where we were actually worse off. Um, so going from a, a high, a peak, where our membership kind of peaked after that, that marketing cycle in October to a few weeks before Christmas, being in a worse position than we had been in a while. And that really was our main pivotal point um, where we said that, you know, we, we need some help. What was annoying about it was like the, the 25, they wasn't down to a poor service delivery. It was just circumstantial. People moved away, people got pregnant, there was medical stuff. But what it really hit home that we didn't have the volume to ever give us any kind of leeway or any kind of relief. When people went, it just hit us hard and we were getting to the point, our outgoings were exceeding, well they were, they were exceeding our incomings. And when you do have landmark times, and Christmas is a landmark time, especially when you've got a family, and when you had a previous year where you went, we are doing, we're not doing this again, we're not being in this situation again, something has to, has to count for the work and the effort we're putting in. And then a year later, you're still in that position. It's the biggest smack in the face that you've gone nowhere. And, you know, unless you change something, nothing is going to change. Because unless we make a change, the following Christmas, we're going to be in the same position and arguably it could be get worse because you, you don't know. We certainly weren't in a better position. And um, it was a real, real hard hit, I've got to be honest. And it was a real smack in the face to realise that something has got to change. And I think that was the pivotal moment. And we took a phone call from Martin and I'll be brutally honest, I remember when it called and it, we were just looking potentially some help in marketing because we recognised that was where our failings were. 
advertising, maybe some more ideas on a degree of programming. We had no way contemplated becoming part of an S&P franchise in any shape or form. It was not on our radar. And I think we had a very hard hitting phone call, which was about how much time we had together, which was none. How much time we had with our children, which was nowhere near anything like we'd ever planned to have, but this, this was meant to deliver us. And where we were financially, when was the last holiday we'd paid for, which was eight years ago. Um, we'd actually paid for, it wasn't an expensive holiday, but it was the last holiday we'd actually paid to go on with our family. And they were real hard-hitting questions that, I've got to be honest, I got really upset when that phone call was made and I was no way expecting that. And we're all uncomfortable with change because we build up to a point where you think what we've done is right. It's not always right. And sometimes it takes a questioning from the outside and something that might challenge you, something that might be uncomfortable, but actually forces you to look at certain things that you're not doing to the optimum level, you're not doing right. Um, I mean, and, and when I actually met met them and they came down I was better but when I went up to stop pause and saw the way the facility worked and I saw that our service delivery was exactly you know what the, in the whole exactly what S&P was every time a niggle and doubt would come in I'd always think what if we didn't have this option where would we be now if we had not taken on this option and we had not taken this road this route that we've gone and gone with and it's dismal where we were. And it really did um, show the transition from, of where we were to where we were going. Mm. And to see the change in Al was huge mm. because Al had someone given, instead of Al thinking, how am I gonna get through this day? What are my priorities for the day? What do I need to achieve so that we can get through this week? It was bang, there would be a post, there would be something else, there'd be more communication, there would be more direction, there would be more, this is what we've got to do today and you buy into it and you understand why you've got to do it and but you're all in it together and you're not inventing it yourself you've got direction and guidance and it's absolutely brilliant and to be honest it takes the most enormous pressure off obviously the, the advertising uh, cycle started mm. and like the applications just came in like there was no tomorrow i think uh, we we grossed out, like over a hundred applications within a couple of weeks which is just beyond anything we'd ever experienced. Because we were using the same system that Martin taught to us, um, you know, years before, or the year before. But, um, we, you know, we'd had maybe like 20 at a time, 25 at that a time. That was the most we've had, Al. Yeah. We, ne had, we never had that kind of number. Did we? I think yeah, we, we had, did. Did we? Yeah. That was the best. You're thinking of conversions. Ah. So we had, we had yeah, 20, sorry. 25 applications at a time, and then we convert maybe 50% of those. Yes. But when these started coming, it was the fact that they could optimise it, and the fact that it got adjusted based on the response and the numbers that the adverts got ad adjusted and mm -hmm. assessed so that um, you know they get changed around and he changed the, the text and retargeting and the, the images used and it just kept a constant influx of applications coming in like I have never seen before. And it gives you faith because there, when we'd done it before, you'd we'd discuss well should we turn it off now or should we keep it going? Should we turn it off now? Should I try something else? Should I keep and keep it? And we didn't we didn't know what we were doing really. We go. Well, we spent enough money now, but yeah. Um, yeah, let's turn it off. Let's turn it off, and that's how we operated before. And the, and the difference that came through with with someone who knew what they were doing, yeah. it was it's huge, absolutely huge. And it did because as you put more into the marketing and more, it more kept coming back and coming back, and it's still coming back. Yeah, and one of the one of the biggest things for me was like that change in mindset because we used to advertise and all we used to look at was the money spent. Yeah. And it was money spent, money spent. And we, we can't afford that. that. We now. can't afford that advert. That's enough. We need, we That's our off. budget. Yeah. Whereas, um, you know, might have to sort of change that mindset for us because he sort of said, look, you know, you invest your money in advertising, but look where you're getting back. So we would cover that spend, you know, within a couple of days. And it's just, it was just having the confidence and the belief in that system for it to work and provide the return in itself. And get the message out there of what we do, of what we provide here, yeah. which we'd never done. We just, we just, it's almost like, yeah, it and you start second guessing yourself, whereas when Martin was there and the guys were there and they'd be like, look, just trust the process, follow it through. For me, the biggest thing is, is to not try and do it by yourself. I think, um, you know, it's a big mountain to climb and sometimes, you know, we get, we get proud and we have pride and we have all these type of things and all they do is get in the way. They inhibit you. 
you know, yeah. reaching out for help, reaching out for support, getting people who know what they're doing and specialise in certain areas to work together to it will just accelerate your progress. Just yeah. don't be scared to actually go for it. Um, I mean, you've been brave in all the other th all the other things that you've done in your life in terms of setting up the business, setting up how it works, making investments in everything else. Don't be scared to actually get it out there and let people know what they're doing help you to get that message out there so you can deliver it to the numbers and the volume of people that make it all worthwhile.